Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So you've heard of transgender, you've heard of transsexual, but have you heard of transracial? Recently, an influencer named Ollie London has come out as transracial or trans-Korean. This whole controversy, this whole debate, conversation, whatever you want to call it, has been going around for years now and I feel like it is finally time that I give you guys my opinion on it. For today's video, we're going to be talking about the idea of transracialism or the idea that you can be a race that is different than the race that you were born as. I post the videos twice a week here on my channel, so if you are not yet subscribed and you would like to be, go ahead and do that right now. I'll wait for you. Are you done? Thank you very much. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to keep us up to date with me as possible. And yeah, with no further ado, let's get right into today's video. So I feel like for the most part, transracial is one of those words that you can kind of sound out, you know? In this context, transracial people are people who identify as a race that is different than the race that they were born as. A famous example of a transracial person or somebody who identifies as transracial is Rachel Dolezal. Rachel Dolezal is a white woman. She was born to two white parents. However, she identifies as black. Rachel became infamous back in 2015 when she resigned from her position as the president of the NAAC chapter of Spokane, Washington. She did this after she found herself and a lot of controversy after claiming that she had been the victim of race-related hate crimes. A lot of people were obviously very, very upset with Dolezal and some people even argued that her positioning herself as black identified was a form of cultural appropriation or even fraud. The person that this video is going to be focused on, however, is a person named Ollie London. Ollie London is an influencer or a YouTuber, whatever you want to call them, and they recently made international headlines because they came out as trans-Korean or transracial. Now, I will quickly note that Ollie does also identify as non-binary, so I will be using they, them pronouns for Ollie throughout this video. I just think that even when we don't necessarily agree with everything that a person has to say, it is important that we do validate and recognize their gender identity so I will be using they, them pronouns. As for their racial identity, however, I've always been the type of person to keep my mouth shut when I don't agree or I don't necessarily understand somebody else's identity. As long as it doesn't cause harm to that person or you know other people, obviously, I don't really care. You know, you do you. This example in particular, at least in my opinion, is intentionally designed to equate a transgender identity to a transracial identity and that's when I feel like I need to say something. So if you've not seen Ollie's video yet, I'm going to play a few clips from that video right now. So uh, beware. Hey guys, I just want to take this chance to, um, you know, come out today. I've seen a lot of other people online that have come out and been very brave about it and shared their story about how they identify their gender, their pronouns, etc. So, you know, I've taken courage from these incredibly brave um, people and it is Pride Month at the moment. So. You know, I thought this was the best time to do it. Um, you know, and add add a voice, add strength to the LGBTQ plus I community. Um, so I am going to come out today and say that I've been transitioning. I've been very unhappy with who I am deep down um, for the last eight years, and I've, you know, I've had like eighteen plastic surgeries now. These are just part of my transition. Um, I'm feeling really good. I'm, for the first time in my life, I feel beautiful, but I am coming out as non-binary. Um, I don't feel I identify as male or female. I just feel like I'm just in the middle. My pronouns are they, them, Korean, Jimin, because I know a lot of people don't understand me, but I do identify as Korean and I do look Korean now. I do feel Korean. I don't identify as British, so please don't refer to me, any media or anyone online as British, because I, I identify as Korean. That's just my culture. That's my home country. That's exactly how I look now. And I also identify as Jimmy and that's my career name. You don't understand if you're trapped in the wrong body your whole life, like you don't understand. Um, I haven't been trapped in this body my whole life, but it's been the last eight years and it's been very tough. I'm non-binary now, so I can be addressed as they, them, Korean or Jimin. So they slash them slash Jimin slash Korean or core slash Ian Korean. Um, that's how I identify. There's a lot going on here. Duh. Did anybody else feel like this was just completely insincere? Like I said before, I am going to respect their non-binary identity. That's just, you know, what I'm going to do. Even though they literally misgendered themselves the only time they referred to themselves in this video, but it's fine. It feels like they just watched a couple coming out videos and, you know, took a lot of the language and the rhetoric and kind of twisted it into fitting their own narrative. It gives me very much my pronouns are nor slash mal 
I identify as an attack helicopter. It just feels like a gag or like this desperate attempt for attention at the expense of the non-binary or trans community. They also posted another video that I did not include clips from right after the video that I did include clips from. In the second video that we did not see, Ali is addressing Dr. Phil and saying, oh, don't be mad at me, Dr. Phil. Look what I've done to myself now. Don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. You see all these different people going on Dr. Phil with their wild stories. And then afterwards they come out with like, oh, it was just for attention, it was just a gag. And I can't help but think that this situation is extremely similar. And if it wasn't for the whole equating a transgender identity to a transracial identity, I could have let it go. I could have been like, hey, get your 15 minutes, you do you, it's fine, I support it, you know? But being transgender and being transracial are not only extremely different, but implying that they are the same causes a lot of actual harm for real life people. People say, well, if you can be transgender, why can't you be transracial? Do we really need to talk about it? Like, do we have to? Really? Okay, let's just take a quick look at the definitions of race and gender. Race is defined as a category of humankind that shares certain distinctive physical traits. Race is usually associated with biology and linked with physical characteristics such as hair texture or skin color and covers a relatively narrow range of options. So the key words here are physically determined. Your race is passed down by your parents. It's prescribed in your biology. Gender, as we've talked about many, many times, as I've said many, many times, is not at all determined by biology. It's rather determined strictly by those social characteristics. The World Health Organization defines gender as the characteristics of women, men, girls, and boys that are socially constructed. So just to emphasize again, gender is purely the social characteristics. These two concepts do not compare at all. But not only are these two ideas not comparable, videos like Ollie's that equate being transgender to transracial are causing actual harm to trans people and actual harm to people who are transracial. When I say transracial, I'm not referring to the people like Rachel or like Ollie who, you know, identifies a different race in their born as. I'm referring to the word transracial in the way that it has been used for decades. This quote from an article from an actual transracial person says, transracial is when a child of one race is adopted by a family of another race. It is most often used for transracially adopted children of color or adult adoptees of color whose adoptive family is entirely or majority white. It goes on to say transracial is not a fun, trendy word for white people to steal and appropriate or a laughable fake term for activists of color to demean and mock. It's my identity, rife with complications and nuances and layers upon layers of trauma. Trauma that many other transracial and transnational adoptees share, whether we might use this word or not and whether we might feel direct, personal, everyday impact or not. In addition to hurting those transracial people, the blurring of the lines between transracial and transgender is hurting transgender people as well. It's clear in Ollie's video that they are trying to equate being transgender and being transracial in an attempt to validate their own identity and people like Ben Shapiro are loving this. I think groundbreaking news, a British influencer named Ali London is uh, a non-binary person. They have identified as non-binary. But not only that, Ali London decided to have $150,000 worth of plastic surgery in order to quote unquote look more Korean. And now Ali London identifies as trans-Korean. There are zero distinctions, none, between being trans-Korean and being a trans person of another sex, okay? It is Pride Month. Live your truth, Ali. Live your truth. Ali London is just as Korean as Caitlyn Jenner is a woman. Trans Koreans are Koreans. Okay? And if I say it over and over, it becomes true. Ollie's irresponsibility, intentionally or not, is feeding conservatives ammunition to invalidate trans identities. It is a little bit hard to say whether or not Ollie was intentionally mocking the LGBT community. Kind of hard, I guess. It does seem that way, but you know, whether it was intentional or not, this invalid association is irresponsible, damaging, and honestly, kind of insulting. I will say that when somebody has this much plastic surgery, it does seem evident to me that there is something underlying influencing them to do these things. Whether or not it's Ollie's non-binary identity that's influencing these decisions or not, I do feel, you know, some sort of compassion for them. Not feeling comfortable in your own body and not identifying with the person that you're being perceived as is torturous and I do genuinely, genuinely hope that this person finds happiness and comfort in their own identity and their own in their own life. I just hope they find a way to do that that does not harm other communities in the process. All right, that's pretty much all I had to say about this whole situation. What do you all think about this? Do you think being transracial is a thing? Do you think it's not a thing? Let me know. 
this video was not made to, you know, offend anybody or invalidate anybody's identity or anything like that. I just felt this video was important to make because being transgender and being transracial are obviously two very, very different things. And putting them in the same box and making them seem like kind of the same situation is very, very damaging. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. It really helps out my channel a lot. I post new videos twice a week here on my channel, so make sure to subscribe if you are not already and you would like to be. And yeah, other than that, I think I'm going to go. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in next week's video. Bye everyone.